He's an award-winning photographer and photojournalist currently based in Savannah, Georgia, and travels extensively throughout the southeastern United States. In addition to having uh, this school, Savannah State is one of his clients for shooting sporting events. In particular, he also covers Jacksonville Jaguars professional games, and he can elaborate and tell you other games he's covered. Got outstanding work. I've looked at his uh, website, and uh, I present to you, Mr. Stephen Morton. Give me all the we're going to talk about general news and sports, right? Uh, documentary. Documentary, right. Touch a little bit of sports. You, you guys, I ran into some of y'all at uh, some of the events over Tiger Week, uh, as they call it. So, um, yes, in addition to Savannah State, I also do work for the Georgia Port Authority, Savannah Technical College. Um, I shoot NFL football for the Associated Press. I shoot general news for New York Times and AP and Wall Street Journal and a whole bunch of other folks. So, um, I'm excited to talk to you guys about this stuff. Uh, you guys are just, it's, it's a ba this is a basic photography class, basic photojournalism class. Basic photo, this is the only photojournalism class we offer you. Okay, good. So um, so you guys are probably hitting up some of the basic things, composition, learning how to use your camera, things like that, right? Okay, I anticipate, I mean, you guys, if you have any questions, just you know, raise your hand, shout out, anything else like that. It, you know, there's, there's no rules here other than just be polite and and I'll try to do the same thing. So what I'm going to do at first here is I'm going, to, I'm going to blow through some slides. There's like 140 of them or something like that. So it's going to be kind of quick. I just want to give you an idea of what I do for a living and how I do it. Now, you can take some of the things that, I, that you're going to see here and use them in your what he's teaching you, right? Rule of thirds, depth of field, you know, using your shutter speed, all that kind of stuff, how to capture a action, how to think with photos these are the type of things that i want to talk to you guys about right so you're going to be doing a documentary or a photo or a photo essay or a photo story uh is your next assignment is that right after general news after, after general news. news right so uh, i kind of t you know we as photographers right because you all now are poof photographers uh that we have to think visually right how do you tell a story visually you could do it in words some of you guys are writers probably right some of you I don't know what else, how else you communicate, but you know, visually, you have to tell stories like you would tell a friend you know, a story. You wouldn't tell them just one aspect of the story. You have to tell this person all of it. You have to set the scene. You have to give some kind of emotion to this. You have to give some kind of moment when it happens. You have to get little details that you picked out to help in 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 enhance all that stuff. So that's the, the, the drive of a photo story or as a photographer, or as a photojournalist, or anything else like that, is to do all of that at every assignment. Now, some of you guys were at the basketball game, the football game. Now, I said, shoot details when they talk to me. Shoot details, shoot overalls. So that's part of the story that you're trying to tell. You may not use it, you may not fit the assignment, but you have to think like that. So you have to step back, you have to capture the entire room, right? Then you have to come in and see what somebody's doing and how they're working and they're writing notes. And then you have to maybe come in and see the details of the notes he's writing. This all builds the visual story that you're trying to tell. You can do it with one photograph. It's very difficult to do. But you know, for the most part, all the news that you're seeing, that's what they're doing. Even on television, they have big scene centers. They set somebody up in a helicopter. They said this church was out in the rural Texas, for instance, what happened this weekend. You know, and there's a whole bunch of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow through some slides here. If you have any questions at all, raise your hand. Don't, you know, don't. Don't, be, don't in, you know, feel like you can't interrupt me. This is my favorite photo of the whole group. <laughs> That's the profile picture. So, yeah, right, exactly, profile picture, right? So yeah, see the goalpost? That's, I love the goalpost. So that's, the goalpost basically is called a sense of place. So you know where this is. He's not on a basketball court. You know, he's not a 7-Eleven. You know where he is. He's squatting in the end zone doing his job shooting football. Environmental portrait. So I went to school at the University of Florida. Ooh. Uh, I went to high school, I went to high school in, uh, in Key West, and uh, Dennis opened a brand new $12 million J school up there, College of Journalism. So I have a degree in journalism from the University of Florida. Also worked at uh, the student newspaper there, the Independent Florida Alligator. Aww. You like that mustache? Mm -hmm. You got like so, you know, some like 1980s porn stash. So my friends always say. <laughs> <laughs> it's fresh. Yeah, it's fresh, isn't it? So, uh, and we also invented the selfies. Uh, so, I mean, that's what you're going to see here. You're going to see a bunch of these things. So, these are all shot on film. Uh, it's me and the mermaids down in Florida. Right, River Street. Cheerleaders. 
an airplane. So this is shot from the cranes at, uh, at, at GPA, George Port Authority. You look like you have way too much fun. <laughs> yeah, and this is the other thing. People ask me, you know, what do I do for a living, right? So I, don't do, I don't work for a living. I love what I do. I absolutely love what I do for a living. So when I, you know, if I'm required to get up at dawn, if I'm required to work 14 hours, I don't care. You know, it's my job. It's my passion. I love this stuff. I absolutely love it. So this is not work for me. So this is uh, my last front page in the New York Times. So the picture up top there is flooding on uh, the road to Tybee. Uh, it went with a, uh, a sea, sea level rise story that's all happening that uh, it's all over the world. This is a uh, coverage from uh, Hurricane uh, Matthew, right? Matthew up there. This is President Street, a woman walking out of a homeless camp. Uh, a business section for the Times, sports, Georgia Forestry Magazine. This is an, um, just a, a bunch of portraits I've shot of people who own land and cultivate that land for forest pro tree products. Is that more than the Trojans? That? No. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, from Gainesville, the sports picture. Yeah. Yeah, it's from Gaines, the Gainesville football, the baseball team. They just won a state championship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is one of the assignments I shot for the Times. It's a it's a steel mill up in South Carolina. So it's all about, you know, when you're when you guys are out shooting, you have to have a sense of light. And this is a really great example of a sense of light with it, right? I shot the guy where you could see his face, you could see the computer screens and all that kind of stuff. But I saw all the light dancing around on the ceiling, and I thought, oh my goodness, that will make a really, really strong image. Because the light is from the furnace where they're actually melting steel. So it's moving back and forth, and it's a nice little display up there or something like that. So it's, it's all about, you know, you have to see light in this job. That's the furnace. That's another one of the furnaces, right? Two of them. So this is a photo story essentially on it, right? See, you see the pictures that I'm doing. This is this is an overall picture. The last one was a detailed picture. Um, trying to use shapes, squares, round things, graphic elements in photos. You know, it's not just somebody's face. You may want to put them, you know, in, in some kind of graphic element to help that subject pop out. That's how it ran in the newspaper. <coughs> Also covered St. Patrick's Day for the last, I don't know, like 19 years, something like that. Okay, this is a good example of how to use motion to freeze your subject and to make that subject stand out. Because you guys, you're photographers, whether you're photojournalists or you're going to go on to your career or something else, uh, every time you pick up a camera, you have to make sure that people, just like when you write something, you have to make sure that people get what you're looking at, what you're trying to convey, what you're trying to communicate to those people, right? Mm -hmm. There's a number of different tools in your toolbox as a photographer you could do. You could do depth of field is one of them. You talked about depth of field, right? right? Motion blur is another one of them. You pan with this, the background goes fuzzy. People look at three different things. They look at what's in focus immediately at a photograph. They look at what's in focus. They look at highlights and contrast, right? If you get all three of those in there, you, the, your, you know, your, your viewers, are just gonna have, they're going to have to look at whatever you want them to look at. It, in moments, these are like little slices of life, you know, little one thousandth of a second that you look at. You just can't get back. This is an overall scene set, right? The parade route, the Clydesdale. Just another little moment, a storytelling moment in one photo. <laughs> another scene setter, right? Sense of place, you know where you are immediately. Well, you the locals, you know where you are, right? Downtown. Yep, right in front of City Hall on Bull Street. You look like right in front of their face when you could be? No, telephoto lens. Oh. But I was, you know, it's sometimes in front of their face. The wide stuff you can see in front of their face. You so that? Port of Georgia had a huge event. They had seven cranes working on one ship. First time ever they ever had that. Never had seven cranes working on one ship. The ship was absolutely, it was 1,200 feet long when it came in, right? This is a panoramic. It's stitched from 20 pictures, 20 vertical pictures, right? That's why it looks like it's a painting? Boop, 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 boop. No, it looks like a painting because that's just, it's, it's just a beautiful image. I mean, the cloud is right there. It just... It's a little bit of post-production work. As a journalist, okay, this is something that's hugely important. As a journalist, I don't manipulate pictures. So all the journalism stuff that you see, I don't touch that. 
you know, I may spot out something, but I don't take out fingers and toes or something else. That has to stay. My clients, like the New York Times and the AP, they, they, they you know, truth matters, first of all. If you're a journalist, you can't manipulate your images. You can't manipulate your subject. You can't say, oh, you know, I don't like that top. Can you put on something blue? You know, you can't do that. It has to be as it is. Truth matters, right? The other thing that we found out from the basketball game the other day is when you're on the sidelines as a journalist, you don't cheer. You're, you're unbiased. You have no sides. You have no dog in the side. Your job is just to cover the event. This wasn't photojournalism, so this is a little bit manipulated. This has got a little Photoshop tweak to it to make it pop a little bit more. But I didn't add that cloud. I didn't add the sunset light on the left side of that frame. That's all there. Composition, right? Rule of thirds. We talked about rule of thirds. Anybody see rule of thirds here? Yeah. Right, okay. Bridge, bridge, pilot. He's a, he's a ship pilot, so he steers the big ships in and, uh, and docks them at the port. But, I mean, this is looking beyond the normal picture, right? Rule of thirds again. Rule of thirds. You get it. So this is rule of thirds also, right? See how it balances out? It's a balance in the frame. Rule of thirds. We use it all the time. Painters use it. If you look at old paintings, you'll see it still from a thousand years ago. You'll see the rule of thirds in there. This is a photo story I work on in a homeless camp. Or, or well, actually, it's on this police officer that's a homeless officer. Um, that's a homeless liaison, it used to be anyway. Um, so this little series is, is, is him dealing with some of the homeless people we all see downtown. This is under the Truman. Okay, good. This is a great example of depth of field. So, what's in focus? The guy, the black guy. The guy in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. So he's the first one you're looking at. You need some coffee. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. okay. So, uh, so what, that's what I want people to look at. I want, I want people to look at his expression. It tells you a lot about the relationship he has with the police officer. Again, what's in focus? The map's in focus, right? That's what I want people to look at. Is the map. Same here. What I want people to look at these, you know, where the the, the other most of the information in this picture is secondary to the fact that you know that he's a police officer in this setting. Okay, so here's some football. This is from I think last year, Jacksonville. I didn't have time to load. That's how it ran in uh, the Orlando Sentinel. This is Savannah State. I just like the shapes, you know, that's why I shot this picture. Golf over in Hilton Head Island. Isn't it nice how that ball is just kind of nestled in the sand yeah. like that, right? I have a question. Yes, sir. How far away from the ball did you have to be to take that? Um, I shot it with a, I have a two to four hundred, I mean, a two to four hundred lens. It actually has a converter, so it can go up to six hundred millimeter. So I'm probably about there. This is, uh, this is, a, I mean, I didn't catch, I probably caught most of the golfer in this one. Um, but so this is, a, so this is cropped somewhat. It's really hard to shoot composition in sports. In other words, I didn't look at this photo and go, oh, well, I want to center this guy, jump, you know, catching the ball, right? I, I'm just out there just shooting whatever I, whatever I can catch. And you know, that's all there is to it. And I'll worry about composition when I get, into it more. Again, this this I didn't, you know, this was shot here um, last year, and uh, you know, I cropped it to where it was a rule of third. Bria, I was going to say, did she play last year? This that's that our was not last year. That's two years. Is this two years ago? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say I think he played in. Are you on the team? No, I just go to a lot of games. <laughs> Come say hello. <laughs> I'm the guy in the chair on the sidelines. Okay. They, they graduated. Right? Go figure, Eli. Right? She, yeah. she read now. I've got the top of the ball. Yeah. I don't know. How many people play golf? I heard this is like, this is what golf is like for the most, most people. famous golf players right here. <laughs> oh my God. So this is a teenager that's a weightlifter. I shot for the wall, uh, for the Washington Post. 
you you see how I use focus on here? Depth of field, focus, <laughs> more Why third. Have have it, <laughs> I'm sorry? Why he's not the average Because we did the physical. He is he's fourteen years old and he's lifting weight that most Olympic weightlifters weren't lifting in their first uh, first uh, first try at the Olympics. He's looking at his mama like that. He's not a grown man. Thank you. Yeah. He's a teenager. He looked bad. <laughs> Again, depth of field of focus to give some idea of where you are in this thing, right? See, I'm communicating in these photographs what's going on. He looked good. Yeah. Yeah, this is just practice. It's not a whole lot of weight that he's doing. So he's just practicing his, his technique. Composition, again. See what's going on here? Awesome. You shot that last picture through one of those rings? Yeah, through, actually through one of those rings, yeah. I saw it, and I, stood, so I dragged over a box, stood up, and looked through it, and sure enough, it was there. Awesome. And you, so, so the trick to doing a lot of this stuff is that you have to know your camera, see how it, how it sees. And then take that in your mind's eye and go through, well, what's going to look like um, if I shoot him with a telephoto lens or a wide angle lens or you know anything else? And you have to see that, how it looks in your head before you go over and do that. And the same with video, too. You have to compose, you have to visualize a picture in your head first. That's how it ran. Yay, politics. This was the uh, 2016 campaign. You gotta crop people off sometimes. I mean, that's just to drive home the point that I don't care what their faces look like. What matters here is what they're dressed, how they're dressed, how conservatively they're dressed, well, somewhat, and you know, and the buttons and stuff. Cheeto. Yeah, believe me. So this is, I spent four days in, the, in, uh, in Charleston after the shooting, after Charleston and I were shot to death, right? So um, I went up there, it happened on a Wednesday night, I believe. Uh, I went up there for AP on Thursday morning, spent four days there, uh, and witnessed basically the love that came out of the city. Um, something like that happened, let me finish the point. Uh, something terrible like that happened, and I think it's really easy for, for people to point and blame fingers and be really, really angry, but. It started with the family, that the family came out uh, with forgiveness and love. And the city came out with forgiveness and love. What was your question? I just wanted to know what the AP, was you already going to... Huh? What the AP meant? Yeah, what the AP... The, the, the Associated Press is the AP. Like, the so thing, you was uh, already, they made you go out and do the story? Right? Oh, they don't have to make me this, they hired me to do it. Well, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so they basically called and said, you know, get to Charleston. I already knew about the oh, shooting because okay. of the night before. Um, yeah, I could have gone up there on my own and said I'm already here, uh, but they called me early in the morning, like six o'clock in the morning, and said to go up there and join the staffer and cover this event. That's how most of my assignments come through, is that the phone rings, or I get an email from the New York Times that says, listen, we have an assignment next week, tomorrow, in an hour, whatever, and say, are you available? Um, and either yes, yes, or more yeses. I tend not to turn down a whole lot. I don't turn down many assignments at all. You know, um, I, I don't really, that's that's not a good reputation to have. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sir. Uh, <laughs> do they pay for your travel? They pay for travel. Yeah, day rate and travel. Um, so, on our caption, we're supposed to put JMC photo, but you know how his doesn't have the little, what is this? The parentheses. 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 Do we, will we be able to put them like that? Everybody's no, style is different. Yeah. 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 Well, you all, it's the style that I gave you. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering, honestly. Yeah. Every newspaper has their own style guide, mm -hmm. but AP has a standard that wherever it goes, it's just two sentences, photographs, just like a show. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that. I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. What's your interpretation of it? Say it louder. Lamont's head moving. What's he doing? Clapping. What else do you see here? Mm -hmm. What else do you see here? <coughs> Across. Louder. Across. Thank you. So where is it? It's up to the memorial outside the church, right? Gives you some idea. I shot this low so to speak, just because it was when you're there, you realize it's kind of hectic. There's a lot of people walking through. There's a lot of activity going through. So that's one of the ideas that I did. I slowed down my shutter just to show that, see what would happen. I just happened to get a point from somebody out of it. Just like there are people driving by and gawking at this spectacle of the church, of hundreds of people lined up in front of the church, dozens and dozens of national media out there doing our job. So I waited and waited and waited for this photo to come. So this car is driving by and it caught the reflection of the church, in front of the church, in the, in the window of the car. People were signing everything with notes. They were signing the trees in front of the church. In, in addition to this fire plug, they had signs that they were signing everything. This is a, a cert, the first service right afterwards at the church, Mother Emanuel funeral service. So I do a lot of stuff on my phone also. So these are like Instagramming things. This is a, a panoramic that I shot on my phone. Uh, that's one photo on my phone. It's just a matter of looking for light. You have to see. That's the hardest thing that anybody can teach you is just how to see light and how to be creative. California. My wife and I went to California for 10 days. I brought all my camera gear. I didn't pick up anything. I shot everything with my phone. Talmadge Bridge, right? Yosemite. Now on top of the Talmadge Bridge. I looked for faces everywhere, too. <laughs> All right. Yosemite again. Rule of thirds, again, even on my phone, square format, rule of thirds. Okay, so seeing beyond the normal picture, you go look up, you go look around, right? I shoot my feet a lot. <laughs> it's kind of like, here we are. This is us in San Francisco. On the Golden Gate Bridge. Like our first, our first look at the Pacific Ocean. Does your wife like to take pictures as well? No, she's not really like. Yeah, she's not into it. <laughs> I mean, she'll dabble a little bit. This is yeah. me uh, on a hike in in uh, uh, in your own in your She took that. No, some some guy. She didn't make it up. So uh, oh. uh, no, some guy ran from. Actually, I shot him walking across, showed him the pictures. Like, wow, that's really cool. I went great. Take she mine. Do the same thing. <laughs> right, do the same thing. Okay, so that's my stuff. 